Are you talking trash? I'm talking trash. And today we're going to be talking trash because we will be taking a look at waste management. Hey everyone, and thanks for joining me today. My name is Matt, and as I mentioned there in the intro, the company we'll be taking a look at today is Waste Management. Now, if you're not familiar, Waste Management is in the garbage business, and they specialize in waste removal services. So, kind of a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it, and they're probably one of the most recognizable names out there when it comes to disposal services. They also host my bucket list golf tournament that I want to go to, which is the one in Scottsdale, Arizona at TPC, so uh, sorry, TPC Scottsdale. And very fitting for the name because it looks like everyone in the crowd is, well, trashed. Sorry, had to throw that one in there, but we'll go ahead and move on. And today I actually want to start with the numbers for waste management. Reason why is because this is not an area that I'm an expert in or have that much knowledge in. And when I look at numbers like this, it's really helpful for me to compare it to its competition to make sure things aren't overinflated or if they're trading at a premium. Because I can use something like the PE ratio as an example. I've said before, PE under 30 is generally a good guideline, but that really depends on the sector that they're in. Because some sectors might be lower, others might be higher. It really depends so you can get an idea as to what you're looking at. And that's why I'm also going to be comparing waste management to Republic Services and Waste Connections. Taking a look here at the market cap, we can so clearly see that waste management is the largest one here. So clearly they have the largest operation. I believe the only waste service thing that they uh, fall short of is one that's run by your municipality. So if your trash services is not handled by your municipality, then generally, or you have a good chance that waste management is the one running the show for you. When we look at their PE ratio, so the PE ratio between waste management and Republic service, I should also mention this is a forward PE ratio instead of the 12 trailing months or trailing 12 months that I typically use. Not a huge difference there, but I just kind of wanted to use the forward one this time. And we can see that waste management and Republic services are almost the same in that regard. Waste connections is a little bit higher there. And that could indicate that it's trading at a premium, given that it's about 10 points higher or 10% higher than the other two. That is something worth taking into consideration because it could, again, indicate that waste connections might be an expensive stock to purchase at this time or looking forward, it could be trading at a premium. The revenue growth, we can see here that waste management is overall the lowest and we could see waste connections is the largest. And I think part of that is because waste management has been around for about 30 years longer than these other two. Waste management came out in 1968, where Republic Service was 1998 and Waste Connections was 1997. So obviously waste management has been around a lot longer than these other ones, which gave them more time to establish their footprint and kind of take over certain areas. So I would say at this point in time, waste management might not be growing as much as they once were. And so when that happens, you don't see as much growth in revenue. Now you should still be seeing a little bit growth in revenue, but generally that growth is gonna be created from reducing costs as opposed to expanding business lines. In the gross profit, Really for gross profit and net income, these are six in one, half a dozen in the other. The 2% is not really going to make or break a deal for me in regards to that gross profit and net income. They're all within less than a percentage of each other. So it goes to show that this is pretty consistent of an industry to invest in. Now, the return on equity for waste management is much higher. It's worth noting that just because the ROE is a lot higher doesn't always mean that it's a good thing. However, with that being said, I do think waste management can justify their high ROE because it's been something that's been growing over the past three years or so. And part of that is because they're becoming more efficient with their assets. And so their assets that they have are creating more value for the company itself, especially for the shareholders. And when it comes to the dividend yield and payout ratio, this is where waste management is the most favorable. Again, kind of makes sense because they're less of a growth company at this point and more trying to pay a dividend back to the shareholders. So that to me is why I like waste management the best out of all of these. And I would be interested to know with waste connections. Admittedly, I didn't take the time to really look into it, but theirs is pretty low. 
and they also have a high revenue growth. So I'd be curious to know if Waste Connections is actually still in a growth stage as opposed to a value or more of an income producing investment stage. And the current ratio, so Republic Services here is pretty rough, but Waste Management and Waste Connections are pretty similar with each other, which is good to see. I know that Waste Management is currently going through a process of kind of redoing their fleet and getting more automated trucks, which we'll talk about more later. So I think that's why their current ratio might be a little less. They've also, they're also in the process of acquiring another trash service and they are buying back shares. So it makes sense for their cash to be a little shorter than what it might have been a year or so ago. Well, four years ago, because 2016 was when they were not buying back shares. And so again, what's most attractive to me and why I would choose waste management, before I say that, I think all of those could be a good investment. Again, I didn't really take the time to look into Republic Services or Waste Connections, but the numbers there are so similar, and this is clearly a need. It's a business that we just can't live without having. So I think any of them could be a good investment for you, but if you're looking at the other two, just take the time to do your research and make sure it's something that fits well into your portfolio. All right, so now let's talk about some interesting aspects of the business and things that I heard from the earnings call. So I was a little surprised when I heard that the largest segment of waste management is actually the industrial, not residential. And I made a graph here so you could see this and I'm gonna pull it up so I could see it with you. But we could see that the, I'm sorry, I said industrial. So the commercial side is their largest aspect of this business. And it's also the one that's actually been taking the biggest hit recently. And part of that is because when it says commercial, think of commercial buildings being built. So that would be like if you have new skyscrapers going in hotels, any commercial business being built from construction, obviously those create a lot of waste. And that is the largest part of waste management's business is actually collecting those and properly disposing of all those materials that are left behind from a construction. That was interesting to me. I definitely would have thought residential and going into this, I thought residential was gonna be the biggest one. So I really thought that this was going to be like a 100% recession proof investment. In theory, I still believe it is because again, this is a need, not a want. And residential can always kind of keep the business afloat, but it is interesting to know that commercial is their biggest space. So that means in times when building just isn't happening or when it's slowing down, that can really influence the business. And honestly, it might create a good buying opportunity because their earnings calls are going to reflect the decrease in revenue from that largest aspect being hit. I also thought it was a little interesting here though, that if you look at recycling, so their recycling portion has been going down. And I wonder if maybe more municipalities are taking over for recycling. That was interesting to me. I thought it would have also been a little bit bigger of a portion of what they do, but anyway, recycling has been taking a hit. And lastly, we have the industrial. So it's gonna be more of like your hazardous waste or like chemicals or anything along those lines. And clearly that's still a big portion of their business. And I think that's also one of those similar to the residential part where regardless what's going on in the world, there's still going to be that industrial waste being created. And so they'll still be able to have certain aspects of their business being kept afloat. But again, the commercial one is obviously the biggest part and that's the one that's most susceptible to economic downturns and swings. As I mentioned earlier too, they are in the process of acquiring American Disposal. I think they're actually it's called ADS or something along those lines. And I believe the reason for that is because it allows for them to get a larger footprint. A lot of these areas have already established a trash system. So it's hard for waste management to kind of go to the local boards and, you know, knock, knock, knock. Hey, I'd like to pitch on our waste service because it's already been established. So that is one of the ways that they're able to continue to grow is by acquiring other businesses that might have footprints in areas that they don't have exposure to already. This was a deal that started a year ago. I think it was almost like a year ago to the date that they started the acquisition of American Disposal. That is still a deal that's being worked on, but it sounds promising and it sounds like we're nearing the end of that. And they're automated trucks as I was talking about earlier. So this is a really cool thing. I know that my area has it, but when I lived in New Jersey, they didn't have it. Might have switched since then. But if your area has the trash trucks where, or the garbage trucks, where they have like the little crane 
that goes out, picks up the trash can, just throws it in onto the next one. Where in New Jersey, I know that people, you know, are still holding onto the back of the trash truck, garbage truck. I don't know why I keep calling it trash truck. Um, you know, picking up the thing, throwing it in, hopping back on, go to the next house and do the same thing. Reason why they're switching to this more automated service is because, well, there's a few reasons. One, it's just faster and it's more efficient. They have the trucks they're using themselves are actually more efficient. They have like this whole filtering system that lets them run longer. Uh, there's a YouTube video out there. If you wanted to see it, I'll try to link it below, but it's like a 360 view of the inside of these trucks and it's really kind of cool to watch actually so check that out sometime but also to having these automated systems or like the truck do the heavy lifting for you is also a safer way because people can get injured from lifting heavy things there might be hazardous items in somebody's trash and so having these automated trucks again is going to help them reduce costs because ultimately it decreases their liability of somebody getting injured on the job. And it really sounds like their biggest focus moving forward is to really reduce their costs. Again, since this is such a well-established company, they don't have as much room to grow. They're acquiring companies where they can to expand their footprint. But overall, the best way for them to increase the revenue is by reducing costs. And that's been a topic that was mentioned during their earnings call numerous times. So it's clearly their biggest focus right now followed behind with the acquisitions of other companies. So is waste management a good company to add to your portfolio? Well, I don't know what you have in your portfolio, so I can't say that specifically, but I personally believe this could be a good investment and for a few reasons. One of them is I actually saw, I'm gonna pull it up here and I'll put that up on the screen so you can see it, but I found this chart that shows waste management compared to the S&P 500. And you'll see there that it clearly performs the exact same, but actually performs a little bit better than the S&P 500. So, you know, I'm not one for charts. You've heard me say that before, but I think this gives a really good visual representation of just how well they perform with the market. So they have the ability to withstand economic downturns and ultimately mirror the market with maybe a little bit better performance. So that's a really good thing to see. I also think this is a good investment because it is one of those companies that it's just a need. You will really need this service. And so I don't think they'll be going away anytime soon, especially considering they are one of the largest when it comes to this disposal service. So definitely one that'll be around for the long haul. And I think that's how this should be played. I don't think that this is going to be a company that any short term investor is going to see a tremendous profit off of maybe if you bought it a large sum of it a week ago when it was at $90 a share but right now it's trading at around I'll pop that up I think it's $105 a screen uh, $105 a share I think it's again but more of a long-term play you're not going to get a lot of growth out of this but you're going to get a decent dividend return back to you and if you use those dividends wisely to continue to acquire more and more shares it can really be a solid income producing investment for you now one thing i did find the other day that i thought was a little interesting and maybe the last thing i'll pop up on the screen here for you in regards to my research is i saw this little chart on simply wall street and it's saying that the fair value is 106 dollars 43 cents for a share of waste management now, I didn't exactly see how they did their calculation to go about this, and I do know that Simply Wall Street is generally more on the conservative side when it comes to these numbers. So if it's at 105 and the fair value that they're saying is 106, does it mean we're gonna get that much growth? But again, I think if you are purchasing this simply for the purposes of a safe income producing investment, then it's a fine purchase for you. But if you're trying to get a growth stock, then there's other areas where you can get more growth. And really that just comes down to you as the investor for what's gonna be the best for you. But for my purposes and the portfolio I'm building, I think this is an investment worth adding to the portfolio. So I'll go ahead and do that and we'll keep you updated. So yesterday I actually did go ahead and buy these shares. Reason being is because over this past week, it's been increasing a dollar per share every day pretty consistently and that trend is still continuing. So I wanted to try to get into it a little bit ahead of time so this way we can maybe take advantage of a dollar per share, which I bought 25 shares of. Now that's not the full amount that I wanted to put into waste management. 
But again, since it's trading so close to its fair value, I just thought maybe there could be a better opportunity for this. And I think maybe that opportunity could happen after the next earnings calls, because since their commercial part of the business has taken such a big hit, we might see that the revenue has decreased, which maybe, I don't know, the Robinhood traders seem to be throwing this all through a whirlwind, but maybe there'll be a better opportunity to purchase once these next earnings comes out. Again, taking into consideration the fact that their commercial side has taken a hit and maybe their revenues will decrease for this quarter. It's not really something we know, more something I'm speculating on. So that's why I didn't put the full purchase in. If it gets to like $98 a share, maybe I'll create a 60 day order for that. If it hits $98 a share, we'll go ahead and purchase it. But for now, I'm happy with the 25 shares, you know, puts us in right around $2,500. So it's not a huge investment or it's not a huge portion of our portfolio, but it's something to help keep us afloat and keep the, give us better chances of staying in the green. I'll put it that way. I hope you guys enjoyed this watch this Wednesday. If you have any questions for me, or if you have any suggestions of companies that you'd like for me to take a look at, please leave that in the comment section down below. And I'll always be happy to help out, or I'd love to review a company that you might have suggested for me. But I guess with all that said, we'll go ahead and wrap this episode up here. So I will let all of you go ahead and enjoy the rest of your day. You could be anywhere in the world and you're right here with me. So I really appreciate that. I'll see you next time. Tomorrow's my birthday. So I might not make a video tomorrow, but I might see a Friday. We'll see. And if I don't make one between now and then or between now and next week, hope everyone has a fun and safe 4th of July.